Hi kids, so this is your um, Woman Crush Wednesday um, story. We are going to learn about, where the hell are my glasses? They're on the top of my head, that's awesome. We're gonna learn about Emma Goldman, um, and this comes from this book, Rad Women Worldwide, okay? So, let's learn about Emma Goldman. Uh, okay, so at 5.30 a.m. on a freezing December day in 1919, a barge left Ellis Island in New York City headed for Europe. The 249 people on board were being deported because of their political beliefs. As the barge sailed past the Statue of Liberty, a woman peered out of a porthole. She had come here 34 years prior seeking freedom and liberty, and now, because of her commitment to these very ideas, she was being sent away. Her name was Emma Goldman. Emma was born in the Russian Empire in the small kitty, uh, city of Kovno. Her Orthodox Jewish family faced anti-Semitism. Her father could be abusive, and when he lost his job, Emma and her sisters had to work in factories to make ends meet. Young Emma was headstrong. She didn't like following the rules, and she got into a lot of trouble at school for speaking her mind. She dreamed of a better life, inspired by the strong women she read about, from biblical figure, the biblical figure, figure Judith, who took revenge on her enemies, to Vera Polonov, a fictional heroine of Russian literature who was a free-thinking and independent woman. At 15, Emma's father arranged a marriage for her. When she begged to return to school instead, he threw her books into the fire and declared that girls do not have too much to learn. That was it. In 1885, 16-year-old Emma and her big sister, Helena, escaped the violent poverty and growing anti-Semitism and fled to America. Emma soon joined thousands of other immigrants who traveled to New York City, living in crowded slums and working in factories. She worked 11 hours a day and made $2.50 a week. It was more an American nightmare than an American dream. The factory conditions were terrible, and Emma felt that the workers were being exploited. She always had held strong political opinions, but her political awakening came when she learned about the Haymarket Affair. A group of activists were falsely accused of, bombing, of a bombing in Chicago, and then they were hanged. The news of this injustice changed Emma's life. I had a distinct sensation that something new and wonderful was being born in my soul. A great idea, a burning faith, a determination, she wrote. The energetic Emma was ready. In New York, she met like-minded activists and began to publish her writing and give lectures. She believed in anarchy, or the abolition of government, capitalism, and private property, and thought that the people, especially women, should be able to love who they wanted, have children when they wanted, and to move three freely throughout the world. In the 1890s, Emma worked as a nurse and a midwife in the tenant slums of New York's Lower East Side, tending to poor immigrant women. The conditions were cramped and unsanitary, and some women did not survive childbirth. Many of the women begged Emma to help them get birth control, which was very hard to find, especially for poor women. Emma saw that women needed access to birth control to be truly free. Her lectures on this topic were well attended, and soon she was smuggling contraceptives into the United States when she returned from abroad. This violated the 1873 Comstock Laws, which made writing or publicly speaking about birth control illegal. And Emma was arrested at least twice. She recruited others to help her, including a, a young nurse named Margaret Sanger. Emma became Margaret's, Margaret's mentor and supporter. Margaret wrote articles for Emma's magazine, Mother Earth, and Emma wrote for and sold copies of Margaret's paper, The Woman Rebel. Margaret went on to lead the fight for reproductive lives and founded an organization that would eventually become Planned Parenthood. While Emma was serious about her causes, she was also a free-spirited, fun-loving woman. Once at a party, 
um, with other prominent activists as a young male scolded her for dancing. As the leader of an anarchist movement, he said she shouldn't be having fun in public as her undignified behavior might hurt their cause. A furious Emma to told him to mind his own business and defended her right to live with joy. She believed that the way one lived one's life every day was the most powerful political statement. Emma was committed to living with this passion as well as purpose. In 1919, Emma spoke out against the military draft for World War I. For this, she was stripped of her citizenship and forced to return to Russia, along with hundreds of others. After leaving the Soviet Union, she moved to Sweden and then Germany. She traveled the world speaking, writing, and spreading her radical ideas of social change and equality. A prolific writer, she penned numerous articles, essays, and pamphlets, as well as thousands of personal letters. Her five books include Living My Life, uh, her two-volume, 1,000-page autobiography. Emma was never one to stand idly by while injustice occurred. She joined the fight whenever she went, wherever she went, and was a truly radical woman. Emma Goldman. Cool, huh? So, and it's very interesting that Emma Goldman has, um, is protesting about in the late 1800s and the early 1900s about things that are, well, it's conflict theory, right? So in case you're wondering why Emma Goldman, that's why. I hope you enjoyed. And don't forget you're taking your test on Thursday or Friday, okay? Um, I'll have uh, tutoring on Thursday after school, okay? Bye, kids.